all of these celebrities out here, don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world. Young Miami calls Kanye West a effing lunatic for Diddy. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? So Kanye West has joined the chat on this Diddy situation, and he apparently has receipts to prove that both Young Miami and Meek Mill were accomplices in Diddy's alleged criminal enterprise. Young Miami and Meek were both mentioned in the latest lawsuit against Diddy filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones and the way Lil Rod described how they managed to get away with all sorts of criminal activities. Well, it's starting to look like Kanye was right when he accused Meek and Diddy of working for the feds. Meanwhile, some new reports recently surfaced claiming that Young Miami and Meek were doing dirty work for Diddy and trying to get Kanye canceled back in 2022. Back then, Diddy was acting like he was on Ye's side. However, it now turns out he used other people to try and silence Kanye. And allegedly, all this happened because Kanye started calling out the very same people Diddy serves. But what exactly did Kanye reveal about Young Miami and Meek Mill? Were they really doing the dirty work for Diddy? Let's break it down. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these all you fake hard you because you can't shoot nobody anyway and the reason why you got talks because you did a deal you fed so to give you some context on how Kanye reportedly found out about Young Miami and Meek Mill being on Diddy's payroll, it all started in late 2022 when Kanye made waves by calling out the puppet masters of the entertainment industry, claiming that a lot of rappers and other celebs are basically dancing to their tune. Fast forward to his appearance on Drink Champs, where Kanye revealed that Meek Mill and Diddy both reached out to him, seemingly to try and silence him. Kanye called them out as fake tough guys and suggested they struck deals with the feds and their superiors and now they're essentially forced to do whatever their industry overlords demand. What's interesting is that when Kanye was going through a rough patch with the Kardashians and fighting to keep custody of his kids, neither Diddy nor Meek stepped up to show support. But as soon as Kanye started exposing the powers that be in Hollywood, suddenly Diddy and Meek found their voices and asked to meet with Ye face to face. I don't got no celebrity friends because when I was on TV, on Instagram saying, I don't know where my child is and the Kardashians kidnapped my my daughter in public and I didn't have the address of my child. None of these that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address though? Travis right? gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these all you fake hard you. Cause you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks cause you did a deal you fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me. Cause part of the deal for you to be a do all that. Da -da -da -da, and get out of jail is that you promise that you're gonna go pull my coat co car. So y'all shut the fuck up about me. Now let me say it calm. You shut the fuck up about, <laughs> you shut the fuck up about Michael. Right. And Kanye later had an encounter with the paparazzi from the Daily Stardust. He brought up Meek and Diddy once again. This time Kanye was talking about how most celebs are being puppeteered by the elite and claimed that unlike Diddy and a whole bunch of other rappers, he's not someone who can be controlled because he never eliminated anyone. Y'all can't send none of y'all Meek Mills, y'all Puffies, y'all Lil Boozies, none of these names, none of these people that have to listen to y'all because they're dealing with, they have legal, I never killed nobody, right? I'm the that never killed nobody, right? But that means I could say whatever I want and not go to jail. And even if they did figure out a way, I'm still not backing down from what I said. It's Jewish people that did bad business. I'm Semite, so I can't be anti-Semitic. They stole our history from us. They stole who we are, and it sucks. So after Kanye exposed his alleged ties with the feds, Diddy went on The Breakfast Club and acted like he was on Kanye's side, went on and on about black excellence and all the other usual talking points he's been using for years to sway the public opinion. Kanye, my boy, is is a super, super, super free thinker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times what he means is, is like misconstrued, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes just, you know, you gotta stop Don't, making excuses for him, Paul. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not making ex ex excuses. I'm just saying that if he did it, like that's the way he thinks. And so, you know, and I understand white lives do matter, but it's not that. That was our slogan. That wasn't our slogan to go share with with, with nobody else. 
And so that's the that's the only message. We don't have to condemn Kanye or cancel him. But see, Diddy probably didn't expect that Kanye would expose him for being two-faced. Shortly after Diddy's appearance on The Breakfast Club, Kanye shared the text messages from Diddy where Diddy demanded they meet in person, and Kanye felt like he was trying to set him up. After Diddy reached out to him, Kanye replied, come and do something illegal to me now, please. And then Diddy said, as soon as I land, we'll meet face to face. Send me the address. Notice how he didn't even ask if Kanye wants to meet with him. He was basically ordering, yeah. However, Kanye didn't fall for this and he texted back, F you, you fed. Diddy then tried to convince Kanye nothing would happen to him and said, don't feel threatened, you'll be fine, just love. However, Ye read Diddy like a book and replied, this ain't a game, Emma used you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me, I told you this was war, now go on and get you some business. Now Diddy seemingly took Kanye's advice and stopped addressing his comments about the industry. However, he allegedly sent Young Miami and Meek Mill to do his dirty work and paint Kanye as crazy. Shortly after Kanye exposed Diddy's text messages and refused to meet him, Young Miami retweeted a post saying, Kanye is an effing lunatic. By the way, Young Miami recently sparked allegations of being Diddy's Ghislaine Maxwell after Lil Rod claimed in his lawsuit that she was on Diddy's payroll and tasked with bringing young women to Diddy's parties where the women were allegedly served spiked drinks. The lawsuit also alleges that Young Miami, alongside two other women, was paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' S workers and received payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, Diddy's accountant, which outlined Duff and Dunn's ongoing criminal operation. People are now saying Young Miami needs to be looked into because it seems like she was one of the people responsible for bringing folks into Diddy's FO gatherings. And then DJ Academics took it a step further, saying Young Miami is like Diddy's version of Ghislaine Maxwell. But we think your new nickname is gonna be Carisha Maxwell. Okay, I don't even know your last name, but we're gonna put Maxwell on it because you're the new Ghislaine Maxwell, okay? You're the chick that is the mother help to the Diddy Jeffrey Epstein operation. But academics didn't stop there. He later hopped on X and shared Carisha's old tweet where she appeared to be threatening Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Gina. Academics even tagged the FBI and the DEA saying, Ayo, check this out. Find out what island they was on doing this freak off sh now, as for Meek Mill, he was reportedly also instructed by Diddy to speak out against Kanye and portray him as crazy. Shortly after Kanye accused Meek and Diddy of working with the feds, Meek dropped a freestyle over DJ Khaled's track, God Did, and directly accused Kanye of selling his soul. He raps, make a hundred million dollars and still go get my friends after. And that don't go for everybody, just the only ones that bend backwards for me. I will never sell my soul for money, like I'm Kanye. But Meek didn't stop there. He also shared this length message on his Instagram stories, calling Kanye crazy and lame and accusing him of hating his own people. Meek wrote, It hurts my heart to even know some of y'all this crazy and lame. What you be doing for fame driving you crazy? Look how hard you came at me. You know I'm vocal. It's like you hate your own people. However, fans were quick to blast Meek for being a hypocrite, quickly pointing out the irony in Meek accusing Kanye of selling his soul and turning against his own people, especially when Meek seems to be cozying up with Diddy and his billionaire buddies. Now, speaking of Meek's friendships with shady billionaires, shortly after Lil Rod alleged in his lawsuit that Diddy bragged about sleeping with Meek, this video surfaced of Meek doing bunny hops for Diddy's friend, billionaire Michael Rubin. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Sure, this was probably some bet they made over a game of tennis, but it does make you wonder why Meek is letting this man humiliate him like this. And the fact they were filming it too? Like, what's the purpose of this? Now, some fans defended Meek saying it's not that deep and that he was just messing around with his friends. However, others, like Charleston White, took it somewhere else and said this just doesn't look right. Charleston also brought up Meek's friendship with another multi-billionaire Robert Kraft, and he said something seems off about those all-white parties Meek is always seen at, cozy up to these rich old men. Thank them white boys. Fuck you when you niggas go on them boat ride. When you gotta put them white shorts on with them white shirts, with them white socks and them white shoes, and you be in your all white. In my mind, I thank them white boys. Y'all, how the fuck y'all go be around all them kind of white men, nigga? Ain't no around. A bunch of on the boat with no all white party. All white party. 
with them millionaire, billionaire white boy like Robert Crow. Them some freaky white boys. Jump for me, Meek. We got we got a bet, Meek. Come on, Meek. Don't don't come on, Meek. Don't you be a sore loser. Bunny hop for me, Meek. And now, on top of all this, word on the street is that Kanye has more receipts on both Meek and Young Miami, and the way they allegedly do the dirty work for Diddy and his powerful friends. One ex-user said, not Meek Mills and Young Miami protecting Diddy. And another person wrote, Kanye West was telling us about Meek and Diddy and nobody paid close enough attention cause bro, look at that news that just surfaced in context with what Yee was saying. He knew. But what's your take on Meek Mill and Young Miami allegedly being Diddy's accomplices? And do you think Diddy really used them to do his dirty work and sabotage Kanye? Leave your comments below and then check out this next video.